before joining your vessels, you want to make your rattles, right? So you need to make little bits of clay that will end up shaking and creating the noise once the piece has been fired. So I rolled out a coil. When you're rolling out a coil, you want to use the palms of your hands, mostly. You want to kind of start in the middle and work your way out. Um, these little rattles or pebbles I, I softened, but this was the process that I used to make them. I just rolled out a coil and cut. And in another rattle, I went ahead and I left them with raw edges. I'm sure it will make a difference in the sound, but I'm not terribly concerned with that. If you want to take the time and go ahead and roll these out and make them a little bit rounder, then that's entirely up to you. You don't have to. So I'm probably going to have about 20, I think. 20 is a good number. Of the little rattle, rattle pebbles, for lack of a better word. Okay, so that's 20 right there. For the sake of time, I'm just going to put them in as is and dump them in. Okay, now when we put these two halves together, we're working with wet clay. If we made the pinch pots and allowed them to dry or set up, get leather hard at all, then we would have to scratch both of these edges with your pin tool or X-Acto knife and really kind of rough up those surfaces and then we would need to use what we call a slip to join them. The slip is basically watered down clay but it serves as a glue. Because these pieces were just pinched, I don't need to do that. I can go ahead and attach them. Okay, so I have a few gaps here. I want to just try to, you know, see if there's any, any better position I can have on these that they'll actually kind of stick together a little bit better. So it will buckle in the middle a bit. But what you want to do now is go ahead and kind of press from the, the edge of the sides here. So that way you're not trying to force it together like this and make that buckle or divot in the middle even more pronounced. We do want that ultimately to kind of pop up if possible. So on some of my sides it's a little bit better. The divot doesn't go in quite as much and then here, you know, it does. It's, it's not the end of the world. You can work with it. Um, but if you don't want that as a, as a contour, you know, we want to have control over our form. Okay, so once you've gotten them together, you start to, again, there's no water being used yet. Go ahead and take your finger and smooth the edges together. And just do it kind of a little bit at a time. Then you take your serrated rib. And you want to use your serrated rib in multiple directions. And at that point, you can probably go ahead and start to push it outward here so that it doesn't want to kind of cave in in the middle. Again, multiple directions, and that'll really help you to get rid of that divot from where those two pieces were joined together. Doing this with your fingers at first, I'm actually kind of moving some of that clay. You might be able to see that. Moving some of that clay into that divot, so that helps to also fill that in. So it takes practice, and as I am, as I'm using my serrated rib, I'm still trying to push and, you know, make make pressure on either side of that to to help that center seam pop up, so that I have better access to make it disappear. 
And just like I was moving clay with my fingers, I'm doing the same thing with my serrated rib. Once I've gotten the whole thing together, it will just be a, a sphere of trapped air. And so I can get a little bit more aggressive with the amount of pressure that I'm using to make some of these areas kind of pop out. But for right now, you know, getting it together, making sure that that seam is um, enclosed is, is the main goal. Kind of a cross hatching motion. That part of the sphere went together really well. I don't have to work work that area very much at all. So some, some sides are just gonna maybe be a little bit more challenging than others, but also as you really start to get it put together, it seems to work itself out where you don't have that seam making its own contour. And I do have, I'm resting, resting the sphere on the table, but I'm not, you know, pushing down. I'm kind of lifting it with my other hand at the same time to make sure that I can use an adequate amount of pressure with my tool, um, but not so much that I smush it. The other key with using these ribs is um, to flex them. You don't want to just use a rib flat like this. Then you're really just kind of tearing at the clay. If you're using it where you've got it curved, you're compressing the clay also, which will help this immensely because we don't want the seams to open back up later. Clay shrinks as it dries and as it goes through the various or subsequent um, heating processes. And whenever it's going through that process, if there's an area that is weak, it can often facilitate a crack forming, forming and the crack never comes together. It always cracks open. So now I'm really just kind of attacking all sides of it. Just want to make sure that it's smooth. The clay right now is very soft. Um, it's very pliable. It's very responsive. So, you know, for, for the amount of pressure that I apply to it, I can expect that same kind of push. You know, I can definitely cave a side in uh, unintentionally. Now, the, the shape of your rattle is entirely up to you. If you want it round, fine. If you want to think about having it be contoured to your hand, that's fine also. Um, this is really an opportunity for you to just start playing with this material and understanding its benefits, its capabilities, its limitations. So now I'm following up with the smooth rib. And as you can see, that really um, makes that surface nice and smooth. It compresses it very well. Again, I am flexing or bending the tool so that I'm not, you know, kind of carving clay away. It's mostly sliding or gliding over the surface, but it's not totally flat against it either. That will make it drag and might tear the vessel back open. It can be a very finicky clay. An F word that I love to use is finesse. You have to have finesse when you're working with clay. You have to understand and learn how to touch it so that you get the results you want. Okay, so I have a smooth, <laughs> pretty smooth sphere. Um, this is mostly because of, you know, the rib and uh, it depositing clay from one area to another. Once this I could let this sit out. That's what we call letting it, letting the clay set up, letting the clay get leather hard. Essentially, it's just exposing it to air, heat, and or sunlight in order to allow it to stiffen a little bit so that it's not quite as subject to pressure as you continue to work with it. 